Several years ago, when my grandmother, I mean, listen to me, my granddaughter was four or five years old, she was sitting in my lap, and we were watching TV and reading a book and just kind of being together, and all of a sudden she took her little hand and she rubbed all over my face. She said, Papa, did God create you? And I said, yes, sweetheart. And then she felt her face all over, and she said, did God create me? And I said, yes, and not long ago. And she thought for a few minutes, and then she looked at me and said, he's certainly got a lot better at creation, hasn't he? <laughs> Children, they're so to the point. <laughs> well, someone noticed that the word father appears in the dictionary just before the word fatigued, and just after the word fathead. <laughs> so to all of us fatigued fathead fathers, happy Father's Day. <laughs> oh, I remember the, our first son being at that hospital and taking him home. And it was unusual because they dropped this beautiful, fragile little thing in our arms and said, you're on your own, see ya. <laughs> you know, when I bought a washer and dryer, it came with a, in a an instruction form of how to operate it. How do I operate this beautiful little bundle of joy? Well, let me tell you, it doesn't take long. It's many sleepless nights. And I remember when uh, the baby would cry after a while, I would pretend I was sleeping <laughs> and wait for my wife to wake up. And then she caught on, so all of a sudden I was pretending to be sleeping, and so was she. So finally, we'd share the load and we'd get up and raise. So when we talk about Father's Day, Mother's Day, we're talking about parenthood. And we're talking about all the people that step in, in place of fathers and mothers in our lives. And what I'd like to concentrate on today is our second reading. And it said, He indeed died for all so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. That's a beautiful statement for Father's Day. Because not only fathers, but all of us should live for Christ and become Christ in our lives, and especially fathers. And today, fathers are kind of under a microscope. They say a lot of family failures today are due because fatherhood is not as strong as it once was. So we have to look at ourselves today and ask ourselves, what kind of fathers are we? What are we doing to be Christ to our family? And I know that it's very difficult because there are no set patterns except for our previous fathers. Most of us look at our previous fathers and kind of emulate what they do. So as I say, we actually should be living lives that are God-filled. My father and grandfather were my examples, and they were great examples. My grandfather, we lived on a farm. He walked to church every day, four or five miles, and back home. Never missed daily mass. And this was in Wisconsin, 20, 30 below in a blizzard. He would walk. My father never missed Mass, and we were kids, and when we grew up, he'd call and say, did you go to Mass today? That example stayed with me, and that's why as fathers, the example in our lives means so much to our children. And we must keep our promises, promises to God. When we baptized our children, we promised to lead them to Christ, to introduce them to Jesus Christ to educate them so that they would find our Savior. And we must keep our promises to our families. Men, show your children how much you love your wife. That is so important because showing them how to love is when they have a spouse, they will do the same. We must be mature in faith. We must know our faith to pass it on. We as men must give standards to follow, examples. 
I've told you the story many times about my father. My mother, in old age, had Alzheimer's, was in vegetative state seven years. And my father would go and place her in his arms from the bed and hold her and cry and pray with her and talk to her even though she probably didn't understand one word he said. But he never missed a day in seven years. When we went to the funeral, the nurses said, Deacon, you know what a great father you have. And I said, yes, I do. And they told me the story. So fatherhood means feeling joy when your children run to you when you come home. I remember when I was little, <clears throat> my mother would allow me to go to the end of the block when we moved to town because my father walked to work. And I would stand on the end of that corner waiting and watching for him to come. And all of a sudden he would appear. And sometimes most relevant to me was in the snow because there's something about snow that's so pure. And as I see it coming, I would start to leap for joy. And then he would take that big hand of his and take my little hand in his and walk me home. He always had the bigger hand, and it was always there, good times and bad. So it says that we will always be working towards showing them Christ and how we live our lives. There was a good friend of mine whose son had cancer, 12 years old. He was in the hospital, and the doctor said he only has days left. So the father prayed, read scriptures, prepared himself to speak to his son. And finally the opportunity came and he said, son, the doctors say it's only a matter of days and you will be heading home to heaven. Then he looked at his son and he said to his son, are you afraid to meet Jesus? Are you afraid to meet Jesus? And his son said, no, not if he's like you, Dad. No, not if he's like you, Dad. You see, when we show love and compassion, when our children stumble and fall, we're always there for them. We always pick them up. We're there in the good times and in the bad. And when they succeed, we're elated. We are excited in our joy. And you get that lump in your throat when you yell, yes, that's my boy. And then when you see your daughter with that little tear in her eye, you say, yes, that's my girl. And it's a struggle. It's not easy raising children. It's very tough. But as long as we are open and keep the door open and allow God to work with us, we will succeed. And even though you've done all of this preparation and you've laid the foundation for them in true faith, some of them may stray. Some of them may do things you really don't want them to do. But if you laid that foundation down, <coughs> eventually, and if you keep that door open, eventually they will come home, just like the prodigal son. But if that foundation isn't there, they may not come home. So our job is to be Christ to our world, so that we live our lives as an example for our children, for our wives, for everyone around us, and when we do that, we will not only make ourselves better, we will make our families better, we will make the community better and our world better. And that's why fatherhood is so important. We should be the spiritual leaders of our families. 
They should want to go to Mass because we go to Mass. They should want to go to Eucharist because we go to Eucharist. If we don't, it's not important to them. Most children follow the Father. Statistics. Most children follow the Father. So we need you. Now how do we become good fathers? Through prayer, attending church, knowing our faith, passing it on, exemplifying that. And there are many avenues we can do that. I know for myself the Knights of Columbus I was a member helped. Being a member of the Acts community, having brothers and sisters there for you to help you on that journey so you have someone to lean on because we all need people to help us. And when we have a problem, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with a brother or sister. They will help you with that problem. When I had a child that was a drug addict, that's what I had to do. I had to reach out to others. Some people hold it inside because they're afraid of the shame or embarrassment. No. You ask for help from your community of faith, and they will help you on that journey. And they help me. And my son today has been off the drugs for 10 solid years. And I was so moved because when I received my master's degree at age 59, many years ago, but it took me 59 years to get there, the whole place was packed. And he said, could I say a few words? And I said, oh, I said, oh my goodness, my son is going to speak. And you know what he said? I hope I can be half the man my dad is. Because we work through his struggles and my struggles together. And we become good parents, good fathers. There are two sets of hands that are helping us. The two hands of the parents, but God's hands are with us, carrying that child with us and showing them the way. And if you have a separated from your father or mother or anyone in your family, today's the day for reconciliation. Call them. There's nothing that should separate anyone that a forgive me won't do. It'll work. Today's the day because there are many things I would have liked to have told my father the influence he had on me, but he's now in heaven. And he hears me, but I sure would like to be able to tell him face to face, someday I will. Don't lose the opportunity to love him and to love your mother and your brothers and sisters. Now, after Mass, we men have been gathering at the St. Paul statue to pray for us to be good men. It doesn't mean, just mean men. Bring your wives. After Mass, we go over there and we say a short prayer that God will make us good fathers and mothers and parents. It takes about three minutes. And you know what? If you bring your children, guess what? They will see an example of your love and your caring to be a good parent. So this week our job is to concentrate on one thing. Are we Christ to our family? And if we can't say yes, we need to change today. Tomorrow may be too late. Amen.